Hi, I'm Nico Petroni, and I'm presenting Loopy Cuts, a new method for hex meshing. Hexahedral meshing is the task to organize a three-dimensional volume into a descent cube sharing phases. Those meshes are called hexahedral meshes, and they're used in many industrial contexts like finite element analysis. The goodness of an X mesh is defined by global and local characteristics. For example, the geometric quality of its individual element, their alignment to the curvature direction. Also, the mesh should preserve the sharp features. And finally, the elements should be globally organized into blocks. In the last year, many techniques have been proposed for hex meshing, but they've been grouped into three main categories. The grid based methods split the mesh using an axis aligned regular grid. Polycubes methods, they actually approximate the mesh using a polycube. And recently, many methods obtained the X mesh as a result of a global parametrization guided by a frame field. Here, we briefly sketch the advantage of each class of methods. Grid based methods are very robust. They but however, they in generally they fail to align to the curvature direction and the quality of elements is generally very low. Polycube methods are, they can produce nicer mesh, but sometimes they fail to align to the curvature and the features. Finally, the method based on frame fields, they can obtain nicer feature aligned mesh, but they lack of robustness. So many industrial contexts still rely on manual decomposition so those methods require the user to define a set of slice surface within the volume that are used to divide the input volume into blocks and then eventually get the final mesh with the subdivision step. While the quality of the obtaining mesh is good, the process is, is really time consuming, especially for big data sets. One valid alternative is to relax the topological constraints and also allow the mesh to include hybrid elements. So, State-of-the-art method, however, state-of-the-art non-hybrid uh, X meshing, X dominant meshing methods, they sometimes fail to convert to full X meshes, even for the simple case. Also, sometimes the amount of non-hex is really high, and most of these methods sometimes they do not produce uh, conforming meshes. So we actually instead propose loopy cuts that produce strongly X dominant meshes. What does it mean? That for most of the case, we obtain full X meshes. And we introduce a minimal amount of hybrid elements, keeping the final mesh conforming. So let's first analyze how the human create hexahedral mesh using the manual approach. So humans design this mesh by repeatedly cutting the object using like cutting surface and they cut it to get simpler shape. So what the human does, it's actually, they start initially visualizing the shape of the object, then identify the suitable set of splitting loops to cut the object into pieces and then split the volume, right? And repeat this process until it's possible to get the final X mesh by performing a subdivision step. So we want to mimic this algorithm and make it automatic. So in order to decide how to split the object, we, des we, des we define a set of feature alignment loop, which follows also curvature lines. And then we use this loop to cut the object volumetrically into simpler object. And we repeat this process again until we it's possible to obtain the final hex meshing with the subdivision step. What we want from our loops, from our, our initial set of loops that we use to cut? First of all, we want that our loops to be curvature aligned. We want our loop to cross each other, yes, but only orthogonally. We want our loop to be evenly distributed on the surface along both curvature directions. And also we want our loop to include creases as well. So let's see step by step how we can achieve all these desiderata in our loop sampling strategy. So to achieve curvature alignment, 
We trace loop using the field query tracing method proposed by Pietroni and colleagues. This approach allows to keep a coherent direction of the input cross field while we trace the loops. At the same time, this method ensures the loops to mutually intersect orthogonally. Okay, so far we know how to create loops which follow curvature lines and also they are orthogonal. Let's see how we can match the other constraints. In order to distribute the loop evenly on the surface, we perform further sampling in the space of loop. So first we define the distance between two loops as the average distance between each point of one loop to the closest point on the other. This distance is defined in M4 as defined in the paper by Petroni and colleagues. So intuitively, if two loops are parallel and they are closed in the, in the shape, they are also closed into this distance uh, function. But if they intersect orthogonally, they most likely will be far away because they sample two different uh, fields. So then, Using this strategy, we start with a simple loop and we repeatedly add one loop after the other, choosing the farthest from a set of loops sampled on the surface, the farthest from this, the loop that we already chosen. And we, if we repeat this process, we can notice that how this heuristic allows us to enrich the set of chosen loop with the best pick at each step. And we continued by adding one loop after the other until we reach a very consistent rich sampling, both in terms of uh, distance and in terms of uh, uh, topological uh, characteristics. So details of this process are in the paper. So you can see, and finally, we get the final sampling for this model. Okay, now, we know how to sample loops. We know how to have loops uh, orthogonal on the surface that follows curvature lines and evenly distributed. So the last constraint we have to match is to sample also or to include also the sharp features. So sharp features can be concave or convex, right? If they are convex, so they're pretty simple because they, we don't have to cut nothing with them. So we just include the convex feature for the polyhedral decomposition in the end while the concave features are more important because we should use them to produce cuts within the volume as the one shown here in the slide. So if we consider a concave feature on a shape, they might be already closer to a loop and then we can use them directly to cut the volume or they should be uh, non uh, they should be non-completed loops. So there should be some um, concave feature which is not, uh, is not, that does not complete a loop. So in this case, actually, we want to trace two complementary loops that define us how to cut the object into different direction. So it's, in this, it's in this interesting to notice that these two different complementary loops are induced by the field topology itself. And then we can use these two loops to split the object and the volume into different uh, slides. So now we have this set of loops. We actually have to define how we use them to cut our shape. So suppose we have this bunny here and we have a set of loops on its surface. So given a cutting, cutting loop, we look for a function whose zero level set interpolate the loops and whose gradient aligned with the binormal vector, which is defined as the cross product between the surface normal and the loop tangent. So then we actually operate this cut on the volume and we split the object into different pieces. In short, given a set of uh, cuts operated on these models, we agglomerate uh, our volumetric representation, for example, a tetraedal mesh and we agglomerate the tetraeda, the, the tets that uh, compose this mesh into multiple clusters. And these clusters, can, they might be already X or prism or other elements. And at the end, we actually obtain the X dominant meshing using a 
midpoint refinement step. So we tested our algorithm on a very, uh, on a kind of substantially big data set made of about 80 shapes. And the shapes are both organic and mechanical. And uh, we also compared our method with state-of-the-art technique. For example, the uh, polyhedral agglomeration method by Gao and colleagues, which also produce X dominant meshes. With respect to their method, Lupi has, it can successfully recover full X meshes for most of the cases. While when we have to insert hybrid elements, the percentage of non-hex elements insert is sensibly lower than the one inserted by a polyhedral agglomeration method. Also, our method is very powerful in terms of feature line preservation because we actually insert the feature lines into the initial decomposition, we are able to preserve them implicitly. So even for this complex case as shown here in the picture, we are able to preserve the feature and to get the final X meshing. In, an, in this another example, notice that have, having an edge flow that align with the creases, it allows us to conform to a mesh also at a lower scale. So using a few fewer elements, we can create and semantically represent the shape and the volume of this mechanical object. Here we compare our method with the polycube methods. And as you can see, our method can successfully align all the elements along the circular uh, feature on the center of this uh, mechanical object, while polycube has to represent it as a square. So it has to insert some singularities in all these holes. And because it actually fails to align to the feature lines precisely, also the quality of the elements is significantly lower than the one produced by our algorithm. Notice that our method also allows to preserve any kind of features, even the one inserted by the user manually. In this case, this circle has been drawn by the user on the cubes and this circle and this feature doesn't necessarily correspond to a sharp features or a geometric features, but our method can include it and blend finally to a nice fine, uh, to a nice final hexahedral meshing. In terms of singularity, our method both include surface and also volumetric singularities as shown here in the feature, in the, in the slide. Here we see how our in singularity structure of our mesh. Also, the kind of singularity really resemble the ones which are obtained by frame field methods, which is really good in terms of quality of the elements because our results in terms of quality is similar to the one obtained by uh, frame field and global parameterization method, which is so far when it works, it can obtain the best mesh uh, as possible in terms of quality. Here we see other mesh, uh, in this case, mechanical mesh with feature, and you see how our uh, singularity, they uh, successfully can represent and includes all the uh, semantic features and all the structures of our shapes, even for these complex mechanical objects. So we also compared our method with uh, uh, other uh, methods. For example, here you see in the first row, we compared our method with the grid-based method. So while the grid-based method is very robust in terms of uh, X meshing, uh, they actually insert a lot of singularities, especially on the surface, and the final structure is not regular. The quality of element is not as nice as ours. And especially you see here, the block decomposition is very messy with respect to the one extracted by Lupicats, which is similar in terms of block decomposition to the block decomposition of the polycubes mesh, which is very good in terms of representing the uh, structure of a shape. So in all our tests, we are able to produce hexahedral mesh in 70, 
6% of the total cases, and hybrid mesh for the remaining ones. And in case the mesh are hybrid, we only inserted like 2% of non-X element into the mesh. So in terms of state of the art, we obtain much better results in terms of non-X element inserted into the final shape. So in the end, we presented a novel method for X meshing that produce strong X, strongly X dominant meshes, right? Which means that we insert as few, we insert as few non-X element as possible and for most of the case, we actually obtain X meshes. Our method both preserve the uh, curvature and the features, so it means that elements are aligned to the curvature direction on the surface, and they also the final meshing includes the features because those are included implicitly in the initial decomposition of the mesh. And also we released the code that you can try and you can try to process your favorite data set by downloading the code and using for your experiments. That concludes my talk. I hope you enjoyed.